Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers, thank you for joining us. Um, okay, I did have a part come in for the 1992 two-stroke, two-cylinder, single carb, 40 horsepower, Yamaha International Enduro Motor. That's a big old mouthful, ain't it? So, I can get back finishing up this lower unit, and uh, then we're also getting to the point where I'm at because I'm waiting on the carb jet needle and seat. Um, I'm going to be doing some cosmetics. Um, I've already went kind of through the power head and the upper and got it all sanded, wire wheeled, painted. Got as much as the rust and salt and yuck out of there as I could. But we still got the lower unit to go. Um, I've had uh, people ask me, what about the, uh, you put that skeg on there, you can't drain that lower unit. Who needs to drain your lower unit? Just run them till they explode. That's what they do around here. Just run them till... Boom. We gonna drain that lower unit. No, we gonna drain that lower unit. So, I'll show you how I zip that up so that I could uh, get that going. And then, we've got the bonnet over there to do something with. It. It's a fine bonnet. It's just ugly. Fuggly ugly. Can't have no Yamaha Enduro looking all fuggity ugly. Especially when it's going to be sitting beside its twin counterpart out there. So they got to kind of look a lot of kind of sort of mind of kind of want to look alike. That's what I'm going for. They won't be exactly. They're not going to be identical twins. Just close to cook twins. That's what I'm hoping for. So we got that to do. I got propeller dressing to do, painting to do, a lot more lubing to do. Um, but first I want to get to a couple of my subs um, who are looking for parts and show them some stuff. The first one is going to be Sean S. who is needing a carburetor solenoid choke setup for a 25 Evinrude. So here's what he's looking for. Got one or more thing I have to do here. Okay. There's my positive. There's my negative. Get it where it ain't touching no metal here now. That's where it is. There's my negative. Okay. Got those hooked to my little power pack there, positive and negative. And what we're going to be doing here is testing the solenoid choke thing. So I'm going to hook the positive to the positive wire. Then we'll come up here with the negative wire. And then I'm going to slide that carb over a little better. So it's in the picture a little bit, but we got to get it turned over that way so that you can see that. So what we're looking at, or what we're testing is the solenoid here. See it going in and out right there? All right. Then you can see the butter flap flapping. Right there. And so, So there's a carburetor, and I'm going to show you some other aspects of it. 
So as I put my test wires and leads back up, Okay, I'm going to get a good shot of the carburetor all overall. If you can see, now when I put this in my bin out there, it says good. 25. So here's a good look at the whole carburetor. Especially the solenoid. This is the hot wire that you're going to bolt somewhere to a hot lead. There's the bracket that holds it. Here's the carb bowl. Um, that's just a piece of fuel hose there, an old zip tie. But there's the carb overall. It's off a of 25 and it has the old school solenoid for making it electric choke up at the panel, up at the control station. There she is. The bowl number is 322299. I don't know if I can see a part number up here or not. No. But anyway, there you go. You should be able to pause this wherever you want. Here's the bottom view, side view. See the linkage there real good. There's the top. Okay, and this is for Sean S. in Indiana, who likes to go out there and catch the crappie and the walleyes, who lives just a little south of Lake Michigan, beautiful Lake Michigan. So if this is what you need, let me know. Okay, the next person is going to be Thomas D. He contacted me and said, I need a tiller handle for uh, 72, I think it was. Big twin, 40. Well, let me show you what I got. Because this was the only two I really had. Um, so I'm hoping you can see them just fine. But there they are the brass knuckles are good they're not too overly dirty there's one that one has the darker paint job on it so that one's probably closer to your year model this one is off a later model I'm guessing because of the lighter paint but I will show you they they turn nice and free And so, do you need the whole thing like this? With the grip, the spring, the carrier, the washer, the screw, uh, the brass gears. You want the whole arm? Or are you just looking for a part inside the arm? Here's the other one. Turns real nice. It's got all its teeth as well. The brass is in real good shape. Knob turns real good. Overall. Nice tiller. They appear to be the same, just different colors. And I do believe those are off 40 big twins. So I don't know if that's what you're needing or not, but you can call me or email me or whatever and let me know. Um, there's other parts that go to this thing that are kind of essential. This is the bolt that holds it on up under. And if you notice, it's got a kind of like a special I guess almost like some kind of special flex bowl shape um, washer thing. And if you look, there's a place, the nut on this, you screw the nut on this, and it's a castle nut, and then you put a cotter key through there, cotter pin through there. And then there's the, whatever you call it, spacer that goes on, on to all this stuff. So, at what level do you need? You have to let me know. So, now, back to the old in the raw.
Mm -hmm. Alright, we're getting there. Well, you can see the white caps on the bay. This is right out behind the backyard. You can see them breaking way over there. We got a blow coming in tonight. They're talking 50 to 70 knots. Mixed rain and snow. Gonna come a blow. That's all right been through a blow before. As you can see out there on the rocks, she's starting to kick up. It's a beautiful day though. It's cold and windy. Mr. Spot. Mr. Spot. Right in there. Do the same thing that way. Now let me go hang this up. So what's next? I show you. I show you. I'm just going to do a little bit of sand to it in. Sand it in. On this lower. You know, you know, just make it look a little nicer. And then I'll hit it if there's any bare spots with the old zinc. Oh, which way you go? Which one bigger? That one bigger? That one bigger. Yep. Put her all out the way. Oh, all right. Yeah.
Oh, now I need to get me some regular old thinner. Wipe her down good. Hit her with a little zinc. And she'll be ready to go that way. But, yeah. Then once we get the zinc on. Once we get that zinc on there, I'll give her a little paint job. And you say, you say, what next? I'll show you. I'll show you. That's what next. That puppy up you right there. That bonnet. Need some attention. You want to stun us? See what I did? Parts. E40J, E40G, impeller, Yamaha, 6F5, blah, blah, blah. Stands, 18, blah, blah, blah. The more information I get about the motors will get written under that bonnet. But yeah, I got a few ideas in my head on, uh, yeah, what route we should go on this one. You know, this is pretty cracked up, but I could paint pencil this or it, at least outline it. I could bring this reddish orange and two-tone it through here. 40 is a little dinged up, but not too bad. This back here looks okay. I'll just tape over that when I paint. Oh, boy, look at all that cracky-lacky-lacky-lacky, cracky-lacky-lacky-lacky-lacky-lacky-lacky-lacky-lacky-lacky. Mm. So... Yeah, so that's pretty bad. I have to sand all this, protect the letters as much as I can. And that back there, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing right off the bat, I'm seeing at least a stripe of maybe orange-red paint pen through here, maybe some outline, and I don't know. The bonnet's physically perfect. No cracks in it or nothing. It's just scuffed up, roughed up, needs to be loved up, so... That's going to be coming next, that and the uh, painting of the lower unit, installation of the water pump, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's where we're going, I think. Uh, I saw the, I saw the. <laughs> Little bitty baby. Beep, 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 baby steps. That's what you got to do sometimes, especially when they were this salty. Um, salty, busted aluminum. Been sitting for years. I know that this engine has been sitting outdoors for at least a decade because I drove by it that long. In fact, it's in two or three of my videos where I've driven by doing little tours and stuff like that and went, man, I should stop and ask them about that engine. I should stop and ask them about that engine. Well, I never did. But it's here. Because somebody I know who knows outboards, who knows how I like outboards, knew those folks. Happened to bump into them said, hey, what are you going to do with that Yamaha Bobby Dabby 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 broken an arm and sitting and I'm um, um, uh, Come get it. You can have it if you want it. He's done some favors for me. I've done some favors for him. That's how it should work. So here it is. And uh, we're making good steady progress with it. She's really cleaning up nice and uh, you know, uh, it's got good compression. I wrote the numbers down, but now I've painted over them since. <laughs> but it was 120 per cylinder. So the, the numbers are there. Had good spark on both cylinders. Just waiting on a carb needle and seat. Uh, got a little more cosmetic stuff to do. And then we're going to slap this thing back together and in the tank it goes. Mm. Understand. So, getting a little bit late. And I got me some 
cooked up halibut upstairs. So I think I'm going to get up there and get at that halibut. So, as we know, as it goes, that's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.